Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. He told me enough. He told me you killed him. No, Luke. I am your father. That's not true. That's impossible. Search your feelings, Luke. You know it to be true. Hey YouTubers, this is Sesta Ace back again with another 10 video ads video, this time concentrating on VHS. I had intended to do another laser disc, another batch of laser discs, but OCD kicked in and I have been redoing my card file system. And some of you new viewers might be saying, well, what are you talking about? Well, for over 20 years I've been maintaining a card file system on all of my videos, which to date means over 3,000 cards. And recently I had started adding another bit of information on the cards, the UPC number. I have to have uniformity, so I'm going back and redoing all 3,000 cards. Very time consuming, and I know what some of you are thinking. This guy's nuts. But this is what one looks like. Normally, I put the date whenever I watch it, a video on the back. I haven't seen this at all yet. Some releases don't have. A UPC, such as those that predate the use of UPC barcodes. Always try to list the manufacturer down in the lower left hand corner. Which is not as easy to do with DVDs. I have only run across two manufacturers or replicators or whatever you want to say of DVDs that make a point of saying who they are either on the packaging or on the disc and those two companies are Technicolor and WEA Manufacturing. They used to make laser discs back in the day. In fact they had two facilities, one in West Germany and one here in the US. Part of Time Warner, they put right on the discs made by WEA Manufacturing or made in USA by WEA Manufacturing. Technicolor just has a little Technicolor symbol on there, uh, but only on titles that they made. You might see in the credits, Color by Technicolor, but if it has the Technicolor logo, the current Technicolor logo, it means they made it and I have found a VHS tape with that logo on it so he thinks they were replicating VHS tapes at one point in any event I have some anime in here and I have another screener first up from Joel Schumacher starring Nicolas Cage 8 millimeter Here is the barcode I spoke of. The bottom number is the UPC number, Universal Product Code. And the number on top is the ISBN. Now, I did give some consideration to adding ISBN to data to my cards, but I figured, well, let's not go crazy. Cassette. Okay, anime. Burn up W on the case and in your face. This is the English language version. Contains four full episodes. I know because it says so right there.
And I have a few tapes with white hubs. This not only has white hubs, it's in a white cartridge or cassette. The gamer in me keeps wanting to say cartridge. Another anime release, English dubbed version, Card Captors, Tests of Courage. There are three episodes on this tape, which is a screener. Okay, classic, classic film. Hard to believe that I had not had this in my collection up until this point. Like I said, I have over 3,000 videos, so whenever I come across a classic that I haven't had in my collection, naturally the thought occurs, what's taken me so long? Finally picked up a copy of Casablanca or Casablanca. The final scene at the airport has been parodied in so many movies. For example, Woody Allen's uh, Play It Again, Sam, where he is mentored by Humphrey Bogart in the art of seduction. Based on a play that Woody Allen wrote. And at least in some of the performances, he performed himself. I mean, he played the character that he plays in the film. Strange film, though, because he didn't direct it. But um, Woody Allen is interesting in that he started off as a gag writer. He was one of the staff writers on Sid Caesar's Your Show of Shows, along with Mel Brooks, Carl Reiner, Howard Morris, um, Sid Caesar himself, uh, Neil Simon, just an amazing group of writers. He then became um, a stand-up comedian. He wrote plays. He acted in plays. He writes and directs films. Occasionally he writes an essay, or did anyway, for The New Yorker. And um, also is a musician, plays the clarinet. Degree of Guilt. This is a slow speed tape. Doesn't say so on the uh, cassette, and it doesn't say so on the case or the box, but it is. And this company, some of their releases are slow speed tapes, and some are not. Some they recorded in SP mode. Talk about artisan. Anchor Bay, same way, same thing. Some of their releases were slow speed tapes and some were not. I wish no one had gone the route of slow speed tapes. They at most saved five or ten cents per tape doing that. They, buy tape, they would buy tape in bulk. But it just irritated people. I always had to just the tracking. And on my first VCR, which was a high-end RCA, uh, their top-of-the-line VHS VCR in the late 70s, cost me a whopping $1,500. And that puppy had a thumb wheel for the 
tracking and you could give it just a little English it's enough to where a slow speed tape would play satisfactorily but then they got cheap on us with the decks the cheaper the decks got the less features they had and the crappier they were and they switched to automatic tracking control now you could on a lot of them manually adjust the tracking but you had to use the remote and it wasn't easy you couldn't get that little bit of English that you could with a thumb um, adjustment there murder of crows and I wish I had not sold that VCR, that first one, because it was really nice. The first VCR offered that had solenoid controls on the front instead of, um, you know, clunk, clunk, clunk controls. It was still a top loader instead of a front loader. But one of the things that was cool about it was it had. the uh, full range of features even though it was a two-headed deck it didn't have four heads and even though the remote was wired my parents had a wired remote for their Betamax and all it was was a button that pauses and unpauses it mine had the full range of controls including variable slow motion forward and reverse which was cool and if I did a still frame well with the two-headed VCR you're not going to get a perfect still frame but on the side of that deck there were tiny screw heads that were adjust adjustments to adjust the horizontal and vertical on it and if you messed around with that just a little bit you might could get it to where it was a clean still frame man I miss that VCR okay the pilot's wife. Obviously, a rental copy. More anime. Samurai Showdown, the motion picture, English dubbed version. Based upon the SNK Neo Geo games, Samurai Showdown. This is from ATV Films. Okay, this one surprised me when I saw it. I never heard of the had never heard of the film before. It was a television movie made for Showtime. Didn't even know Showtime had been owned by Viacom, which owned Paramount at the time. At the time, but Diane Keaton is in this film. Sister Mary explains it all. Does she? Academy Award winner Diane Keaton is Sister Mary Ignatius and she's going to explain it all to you. She's a legend, an institution, and for more than 20 years she struck fear into the hearts of her young students. Creation, damnation, heaven, hell, sex, and salvation all receive her unforgiving, unwavering, strict vision. Now, four grown students from the past are returning to confront Sister Mary and make her pay for he, her humiliating schoolroom based on a controversial OB award winning play you go Diane 
Okay, and this last one is a musical. I have it on Laserdisc, I think. I used to have it on Laserdisc. I think I still do have it on Laserdisc on the old DiscoVision label. One of a series of musicals starring Olivia Newton-John, Xanadu. with music by Electric Light Orchestra, ELO. She, of course, was also in the musicals Grease and um, the other one is, is escaping me off the top of my head. I may be confused because um, she was in Grease with John Travolta and John Travolta had been in two musicals Greece and Saturday Night Fever, which she wasn't in, so I may have confused her with him on that on those two films. Then again, I might just be yabba dabba babbling and not making any sense. What's the chance of that? Okay, I've gone over, so until next time, stay awesome.